idiotic people on paternity court. You are her father. Are you serious? I have to deal with her now? What is this? It's this on and off again relationship, but it's more off than on. It's off and then everything no, is off. a break. This is not college. You all are producing children. You are the father. Ah! Come on. Do all love triangles have the same endings? Misery? No, I don't think so. Because Miss Rayford dragged her beggar ex to court to claim childcare in her baby's name. Her motive was to win, and she was more than ready for a DNA test to prove her claim right. Mr. Freeman abruptly left your relationship, returned to his fiance, and started denying your baby. Is that correct? Yes, it is. You say Ms. Rayford was nothing more than a fling who is now obsessed with you and your fiance, Ms. Triplett. During your brief time with Ms. Rayford, she was sleeping with multiple men. Correct, Your Honor. The plaintiff started the testimony by saying that she wanted to prove his paternity so that Mr. Freeman could step up and be a real father to her son and shouldn't let his fiance manipulate him. Then the defendant shared his thoughts regarding the baby. I don't believe uh, he's my son. I tried multiple times to come to Trina house and uh, deliver stuff. I, I brought things for the child, you know what I'm saying? And she, she's neglecting me. I don't need your stuff. Uh, yes, your uh, Nah, he referring to the stuff that he bought with Pampers clothes and stuff like that. Girl, stop uh, playing. This case looks more like a boyfriend winning the battle than paternity. Both women are crazy. So after nudging words with Miss Triplett, the plaintiff explained that she did refuse some items because he only visited them once and added that Mr. Freeman was happy at birth. But here, they blew up once again. He was there at the hospital. He said, yeah, he looks just like me. He said, you don't know where he's going. Hey, he hey, Miss Triplett, Miss Triplett, I'm gonna give you all a chance Like to she was there in a the room with us. So, Miss Rayford? Your mom is not here. Listen, <laughs> listen. You all are making fools of yourselves. This is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, these women will not let the case reach its bottom. One is acting so immature, and the other one is so petty. Then, after shushing them, the plaintiff continued that she met Mr. Freeman on a dating site and how her relationship went around. But this led to more drama. I came from California to Memphis. When I came to Memphis, I met two men. And I probably should have went with the first, but he was the second one. The first, and the, and the relationship kind of overlapped. I am sure <coughs> enough to know that, you know, when you have sex, you wear a condom. <coughs> and so I did do that with the other guy in January. Told you the drama was coming? Well, I guess Miss Triplett wanted to testify badly. That's why she was coughing. Next, the plaintiff said that she was pregnant when she went to California, but Miss Triplett denied it, and the judge asked Miss Triplett about baby mama's pregnancy. Because he was trying to keep it real with me because we was trying to get our stuff back together. Mr. Freeman, yeah. you were going back and forth between these two women. No wonder you so quiet. Hmm. <laughs> but now we know you all both got everything to do with it. So when the girlfriend left, the fiance came back. It seemed easy for him, but that's dirty and now he was standing quietly in the court. Then the plaintiff replied to the judge that she didn't sleep with anyone because she was pregnant and she took them to her conception dates. February 15th, I'm gonna use that date that we had sex, although it was a busy month. Wait a minute, a busy month? How, how busy was it? It was too busy <laughs> because by the end of it, by the end of it, I was pregnant. I was finding out I was pregnant. We was caught busy, up. It was good, I ain't guy. gonna lie. Two minutes at a time is good. That's why I'm here. But I'm glad she's on the right path now. Next, they discussed the conception dates, and it was revealed that Mr. Freeman was sleeping with both women around the same time. Then, regarding his doubts, Ms. Triplett shared how the plaintiff admitted to another possibility. Uh, I might be another man's baby, Terry. Uh, you're not the daddy. Um, somebody else might be the daddy. You know, of that way, that's what all at the beginning that way was. He never was the daddy from the beginning. So why you just can't wake up and stop being so obsessed over my Terry, Terry, and leave us the heck alone and go on with your life? Ms. Rayford, is yeah. that true? No. The screaming and petty fights of the women came to an end, as there was nothing more to add to the case. So, before they could drive us crazy, the judge decided that only DNA truth could end this matter, and she read the results. You are the father. Ah! Something wrong. Can't Terry, do something wrong with you. No, something, something wrong, wrong with, with that girl. Yeah, something wrong. Mr. Guzman was a player who never owned his responsibilities with his ex while he gave his full attention to other women. But the plaintiff wanted to put his games to an end by demanding $544 
half of her child's expenses and be done with him for good. But to prove her right, a DNA test has to be done. He not only doubt he is your daughter's father, but he constantly puts other women before her and he drifts in and out of your lives. Yes, ma'am. You say you are here to defend yourself against Ms. Sanchez's allegations and confront her about her infidelity. Yes, Your Honor. So the judge asked the defendant about Ms. Sanchez's plans for today, and he said that her motive was to use the baby to bind him to her life. Well, that's a lot of pride for himself. Upon this, the plaintiff quickly expressed her distaste for him. Your Honor, yes, I have slept with other people and I have gave oral sex to other men, but it's not- Oh, no big deal. <laughs> we weren't in a steady relationship, Your Honor. You're saying that you had sexual extracurricular activities, we'll yeah. call them. No, he was uh, sleeping with other people himself. He was in and out as he pleases. He doesn't have a good character. After this, Mr. Guzman shared that one time she went skinny dipping with her friends and stayed the night with a guy. And another time during their break, he found a guy's clothes in her house. Then the plaintiff defended herself by bringing him down. You were taking care of business and, and not walking out on me with when other I females. Asked her about it, it would your be Honor, your clothes. She there Don't she worry, she what's in my house? I pay my rent and my bills. Were you faithful during this time? No. Yes, Your Honor, I was. If, if men can have kids, I believe, you would have I believe like 20 I was. of us. She doesn't want to say He sleeps there and around because... left and right, and he lets everybody know about it because he tells all these girls he loves them and such. Plaintiff has no chill, and she's not giving him a break. Then, the judge asked whether his doubts were to hide his infidelity or if there's some serious uncertainty about the baby, and he shared that the baby's looks kept him confused. Next, the defendant's witness gave his testimony against her. He locked the door, do she was in there for business. a good 30, 45 what minutes. What I do is you know, none of your business. Nobody else in the if room, your it's just was her. Taking so wait, 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 I hold on. What is this? Is this the on and off again relationship, but it's more off than on? It's off and when then everything you know, it's is off. a break? This is not college. You all are producing children, potentially. When you know, all keep talking about you on break. I'm getting annoyed by their break games. But hats off to her, she's slaying him hard again and again. The plaintiff said that she only got back with him because she loved him back then. But she broke into tears when she exposed the real face of Mr. Guzman and his behavior with kids. Come and be Mr. Family Man, it's okay. And the next day, I'm not your daddy. He's turned to my daughter and told her, tell your mommy to find your real daddy because I ain't your daddy. Mr. Guzman, is that true? I never told her in front of her face. She needs to find the real father for her. I'm not surprised he's a bad person and father. I mean, if you can't love your kids, then at least don't create a bad environment for them. That's easy for you, man. Then Ms. Sanchez said that at the baby's birth, Mr. Guzman showed carelessness towards her. He came last minute, and when he got there, there, he the had the time. nerve to ask me if his little girlfriend can come into my labor room and to see the baby. And at that time, I already knew they were sleeping no, together because it Honor, was posted on MySpace, no, Facebook, and all this other nobody stuff. Nobody was sleeping with anybody. Yes, it was a you friend. Were. It was a it was a mutual friend of ours. I've been in the hospital. It's not a time for extra guests. It ain't no guest list. Who would be so pathetic to do that? Well, I forgot that we're talking about this great man. Dude is a lunatic. It's sad to know how the little girl has to experience their recklessness in her life. And the judge also called out both of them for spreading toxicity around their daughter. When you're having a baby potentially with another young woman and then indicating that later, yes, I did I sleep that with bad. that yeah, woman. I can see where that looks yes, bad. Yes, it looks really bad. For everything you've gotten wrong, you honestly don't know who the father of your child is. Yes, Your Honor. Before Mr. Guzman could talk more, the plaintiff quickly took the chance and said that he would never provide for her child and added that she should have brought her sugar daddies for financial help. And the defendant taunted her back. But the judge had enough of their drama. There are harsh words spoken between both. Quite frankly, they can cut like that. Only problem is when there's two beautiful, innocent children in between the daggers, they can potentially hit them. You got a smart mouth and you telling how you should get your sugar daddy and he talking about how you sleep around. Their break games might be really exciting for them. But in reality, they were damaging to hear when it has a baby stuck in the middle for its consequences. They need to realize that kids need both parents in their lives. That's why the judges called for the results to end their drama. You are her father. I told you, look at everything you know. Are you serious? I have to deal with her now? Mr. Travis is a fool for love, but only for his little daughter. Then why is he standing here? 
Living his life under a blindfold, his cousin, Miss Brown, has stood up for him to open his eyes against the lies of the defendant, who pinned someone else's baby on him. Now it's time to find the truth, and a DNA test is required. Miss Brown, you state you have begged and pleaded with your cousin to open today's case because he's being lied to and taken advantage of by Ms. McNair. You say he's so blinded by the love that he foolishly signed her child's birth certificate and you don't believe he's the father, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The plaintiff expressed his love for his daughter, but also said that some doubts were tearing him apart inside. He shared that in December 2015, he went away, and Miss McNair cheated on him. So, baby mama asked them for proof, and his cousin, Miss Tierra, had a video to support her claim. You and I sent y'all a video of how I'm seeing her. I would like to show you my point of view from where I'm seeing. She's getting picked up right there. Me and I dropping her off and picking her up. From my window, you see her getting in cars, going back up to her house. Are you a so stalker? you can see firsthand her getting in and out of car. Are you a yes, stalker? Your Honor. Hmm, that was a nice video and very solid proof. Then the judge asked Miss McNair about this accusation, and she denied relationships with anyone. But the plaintiff added that she told Mr. Travis that the defendant had a guy friend who dropped baby mama off at her house at midnight. Then Miss Tierra's claim sparked an argument between them. So a friend girl instead of a friend guy she needed to have. A friend guy just means a guy she friend. too many friend guys to me. Where, what do you have, baby? Mind your business. Find me something So you say she has a lot of guy friends. Yes, Your Honor. And you see them coming in and out. Yes. About their relationship, the defendant said that they were committed and she didn't cheat on him and had just friendship with her male friends while Mr. Travis was away. Surprisingly, she shrugged off that having guy friends was better for her than female ones. She continued calling his cousin a liar and argued with her. My cousin, he went away in December. We found out in February, early March. Mariah is born in October. Might as well be a year. Which means <laughs> the you window need to of business, baby. You need to find you something to do and talk about besides me and my relationship, honey. You've been pregnant a year, though. Almost a year. It just don't, it just don't <laughs> add no, up, It's You're not. Right. 11 months is a no, no chance. She's just straight lying in the face. So it was concluded that dates proved Miss McNair was wrong, but changing her statement, she said that she knew about the pregnancy in January. Next, the judge asked Mr. Travis about the birth. Did you sign the birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Because he's stupid. Just mind your business, baby. You are very protective over your cousin because you feel like he's fall he's in love with Miss McNair and he's falling in love with this baby. She's jealous. But he's man. not paying attention to the fact. Yes, and she's taking advantage of that. She mad because she ain't got nobody to love her like he loved me. She mad. I just know who my baby no daddy is. This case looks like a war between a cousin and an ex. I'm excited to know who wins this. Then, Mr. Travis shared that he loved the baby dearly, but the date still kept him in confusion. So the judge asked the plaintiff more about other possibilities. I was not dating anyone or involved. Stop I had a lying, friend, like please. I said, I did. But sexually, no ma'am. But when you say you have a friend, you're just saying you're just keeping company. He's just talking. You yes. all don't have a sexual interest in no, one another? No ma'am, we do not. That's hard for even this court to believe. There was a lot of suspicion in this case, and it was not easy to reach any conclusion. But the truth had to be told so that Mr. Travis could find peace with his daughter. And after Miss McNair's constant denial, it was time to open the envelope. Mr. Travis, you are not the father. I know that is not what you wanted to hear. So all this test of lying you've been doing got us here. Soon as I got my hand on that envelope. Oh Lord, Jerome get her. Oh. Big troubles have arrived for Mr. Davis and his newly formed family. How is a small family in jeopardy of breakage? After three months of his daughter's birth, the defendant questioned her paternity. The reason? His medical condition created doubt, but also Miss Childress's mother accused her daughter of being promiscuous. There's a lot to unpack here, and for that, a DNA test is needed. 
Mr. Davis, you stand here in court hoping and praying that you are Isabella's biological father, but say you have medical evidence which may prove otherwise. And if that's not enough, the plaintiff's very own mother says you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The plaintiff started off crying and expressing her hopes that she could prove today to his fiance and the whole family that Mr. Davis was the father of her baby. The poor girl was truly broken. So the judge asked the defendant his thoughts on the situation. Just to know that I have a little girl in my life, but not knowing whether or not she's mine, it hurts. It hurts dramatically that I had so much faith in Samantha and she broke that faith. Then, Mr. Davis shared that he was overjoyed about finding out about the pregnancy, that he bought multiple tests, and was confused about the toys to buy and his future daddy duties. But this moment didn't last long, and rumors about his fiance reached his ears. Family members were telling me that she was talking to her exes again. It hurt bad, and it definitely put doubt in my mind whether or not Isabella was even mine. Uh, shortly after splitting up, not even a week later, she was living with her ex. I was not living with my ex, Your Honor. I was living with my mother. And why does that upset you so? Because everybody's saying this to him. It's not true, none of it. She might be innocent, but the course of events doesn't support her argument. Even Miss Childress's truth was not able to convince the defendant. But he shared that there was another major reason for this denial, and that was his medical condition. And he explained his inability in detail. Uh, quite a few years ago, I was 22. I felt testicular pain. I thought it was cancerous. Um, but he did was able to tell me that I have a 45% chance or less to even have children. What was happening? The pain was for one, and it happened over a period of years. Oh, that's a big reason for doubting your potential child. But listening to his wishes, I might hope that the baby would be a miracle for him. Mr. Davis's medical condition was very tough, so the judge brought in a professional doctor to speak on this matter. The other testicle is completely normal, not doesn't have any damage or atrophy to it. It could function normal, and then it could make up for the lack of the other testicle that's atrophied. So hearing that, Mr. Davis, does that give you hope, or does that just confirm in your mind what you've already been told, which leads you to have this doubt? It gives me hope that that little girl could be mine. So there is still a chance but the defendant shared a shocker that the plaintiff's mother had told him that another guy was the father and the security would escort him out of the hospital if he was present for the birth. Then, Miss Childress explained the evilness of her mother's mind. I guess hasn't really liked him as much because of our rocky relationship and the issues we have had, but I'm, I'm hoping this will help mend their relationship for my mom to finally have the peace and let me have my family together, which is something I want more than anything in this world. Why would you do that to your daughter? She loved him. If you can't accept him, that's okay, but leave the woman alone. Everything was so confusing, so the judge brought in her mother to testify on the situation. And here, we got some more moments of disbelief. Right before she got back together with Mr. Davis, she was dating another gentleman. I mean, it was very, very quick. She and this guy broke up, and a week later, she was with Mr. Davis. And then next thing I know, she's pregnant. Did she ever tell you the other guy was the father? She never said it, but I, I suspected they were, you know, having relations. So... <laughs> pathological liar. Grandma might be right, but she could have just put her words simply. But she went hard. Her testimony added more doubt, and the judge asked Miss Childress about another possibility, and she had nothing more to say but accept the truth. And what if he isn't? Miss Childress, do you know who is? Yes, Your Honor, I would. So that means there is another possibility. I know that just took the air out of your sails, Mr. Davis, and I hated to bring you up to break you down. This case was simple, but it got more difficult to process in the end. So we're tying up hope for both parties that they could live their life with peace. But only DNA results can bring light to their lives, and it's time to get the truth. Mr. Davis, you are the father. Hey!